attending this talk. Um, I'm going to talk about a bunch of things related to bunker-fueled fisheries, mostly peanuts, a little bit on adults. Um, if you have any questions at all, just stop me. I don't want to sit up here and talk for 45 minutes straight without any interruptions. Um, if you have, I don't chunk, so that's the only thing that I'm going to leave out. Not that there's anything wrong with chunking. I just don't tend to do that kind of fishing. But Rich Troxler is here, and he chunks and knows a lot about it. So um, I would encourage, if you have any questions about chunking, uh, definitely aim those questions at, at Rich. Um, yeah, so if you hit the beach and see a scene like this, or see peanuts in the water, you know, boiling bunker, I don't know, if I hit the beach, whether there's bending rods or fish busting or not, if I hit a beach and I come upon bunker, I'm excited. I mean, these things fuel some of the most memorable blitzes that I can recall in all the fishing I've done. Uh, but, you know, I do a lot of thinking about trying to uh, anticipate fishing, especially with the stripers. I mean, uh, a lot of the fishing I do, it's very methodical. I have a very good idea. I never want to say that I know where the fish are going to be at a certain stage of the tide and wind direction. But you know what? To some extent, it's, it's true. And I actually find um, stripers to be easier to predict and anticipate than I do bunker. I mean, I would love to fish around schools of bunker all the time. But I'm not smart enough to figure out uh, where these things are going to be. Um, but there, there's one exception. And uh, I've told this story before. Maybe you've heard it or read it or, or something. But I just want to retell it because maybe it can be applied elsewhere. Um, I live in Riverhead, uh, actually Wading River. But I fish the Riverhead town beaches because they're close to my house. So I fish them quite a bit. When we have peanut bunker in the sound in the fall, and by that I mean like September, October, first couple weeks of November, um, if we get a blow that's hard enough to dirty the water, and by us, I mean we're not the North Fork, the North Fork can blow 25 knots out there and the water stays clean. If it blows pretty hard by us, the water gets dirty. If we get a day where um, the water gets dirty, it's almost a guaranteed thing that the very next day, as that water first calms down, when the wind first drops out and the water calms down, that next day, those bunker are going to be up against the beach. And I mean, this isn't something that I've seen like once or twice. You know, I live there. I get to see that water every day. And in the fall, I'm looking at that water every day. And when we haven't had good peanut runs in a few years, but when we had them, um, 2003, 2004, in that area, I think maybe 2006. Uh, this was like as sure a thing as, as there is in fishing for me. I mean, you, you get the blow, the water dirties, it calms down. The next day, it's not rough, but that water is still grungy. It's still kind of brownish, and those peanuts are up against the beach, and you know, in, in most cases, there's fish on them. Um, so I like to think about, well, you know, why does that work? because it was so consistent. Um, so I used to think that maybe the bunker used that dirty water for cover, uh, because you know they're always running from everything. But I thought, well, if they're using it for cover, how come they're not there on the really rough day when the water is really brown? Because they're, they're not. They're just not there. Um, so I'm writing an article for Zeno's Surf Fishing Journal. and. It's on bait. We're going to do a bunch of uh, bait fish articles, like sand eels, bunker, all the things that um, uh, go through our water. So the first article is on bunker. So I had to do a, a lot of reading and research and so forth on bunker, which was great to then sit through uh, Dr. Franklin's talk. Um, so it turns out, as he mentioned, they feed on algae. Now, that's one of the big things they feed on. They filter algae. Another thing that they feed on is what's called detritus. Like studies show a major portion or a very substantial portion of their diet can be detritus. And detritus, the, the definition of that is dead organic matter in the water includes dead plants and animals and fecal matter. Now, when you see you know, plants and animals, you know, it's not like you know, plants and animals being cows. You know, this is dead algae, dead you know, small zooplankton, copepods, stuff like that. It's just dead stuff. Um, so if you think about it, you know, if I go down the end of my street, go down to the sound, and 
give that water a good stir, or one of scuba diving especially, as this is annoying, when you're moving your fins and you're stirring up a lot of, we say, crap, well, yeah, probably that's what a lot of it is. You know, you're stirring up all this organic matter. So I think it's, now that I've thought about it and realize it, you know what, they feed a lot on that stuff. So I think what they're doing is when that water gets rough, a lot of this dead organic matter gets put into the water. But when it's really rough, there's a lot of sand and silt and other stuff suspended in the water. And you can imagine for filter feeders, maybe this doesn't work out so well for them. Maybe this is irritating to their gills or whatever. But when that water has laid down for a couple hours, the heavier stuff settles out. The water is still tinged, but it's, t it's tinged with all that organic matter. And lo and behold, the bunker are there. So, I mean, it's something that I've been able to use in my area to anticipate when I'm going to find peanut bunker. And when I say anticipate, I mean I tell people at work the day before, I will not be here tomorrow. I am busy. Uh, and, and there's just no two ways about it. I'm going to be on fish. Um, so maybe that's something you can use in the areas where you fish. You know, you keep an eye on that. Um, you know, try to anticipate. You know, again, you need bunker around. But um, if they're in the area, this has worked well for me. And, and it's not just an observation of Riverhead. I've seen numerous times on the South Shore beaches. Um, last year at Finns, we had a nice run of adult bunker go through in October. And some of those best days came exactly the same sort of situation where it blew really snotty and then churned up that water brown. Then it calmed down, the water was kind of in between, and those adult bunker schools were running down the shoreline. So, you know, it's nice to make observations and, and say, yeah, well, this kind of works, but to understand why it might work, and the why being that, geez, these fish are always swimming. They've got huge nutritional needs, and this is something they eat. They eat all that dead organic matter you know, plus the algae and other things. And this is a good reason for them to be in that tinged water like that. All right, um, let's talk about peanuts and uh, daytime peanuts. I don't, haven't come across, I haven't had really good peanut-based fishing at night. Maybe somebody here has, not me. Most of the peanut fuel fisheries that I've had have been during the daytime. Adult bunker, I've been on some good uh, night bites when it was adult bunker fuel, but for whatever reason, uh, not so much with peanuts. Um, so this peanut fishing, field fishery I'm going to talk about will, um, when I see peanuts, a lot of times I'm fishing bucktails. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break off into my open beach bucktail talk. And I'm sorry if you guys have seen this part before, but um, what I'm going to do is, is go through what I would normally go through for open beach bucktailing, and I'm going to tailor it a little bit uh, to peanut bunker. All right, so I have a very simple objective when it comes to fishing uh, bucktails on the open beach. By open beach, you know, I mean the sand beaches, Long Island Sound, Rocky Montauk shoreline, and just pretty much anything but the inlets, because the inlets, that's really a special case. Uh, and that is, I just want to swim that bucktail near the bottom on a slow to moderate retrieve. And, you know, I'm, I'm saying I want to swim the bucktail, I want to glide it, I'm not looking to bounce the bucktail. I mean, you can't even do that on a rocky bottom. Um, two reasons that, two things that really influenced me on thinking that, you know, just swim it, just glide it along. You know, one is scuba diving, so I get to see all that stuff the bass eat. Uh, the regals and the sea bass and the small flounders, the small fluke, all that stuff is just, just gliding around. Nobody's going like this. Now, I know if I do a fluke bucktailing talk, I'm going to be saying to bounce it rapidly. It's a different thing. Why the fluke love that, I have no idea what they do. They like that rapid bouncing. With the bass, I just want to swim that bucktail. It's, just a, it's a more natural presentation. The other thing is, I used to do a fair amount of bucktailing out in like the race. Um, sluice wave plum gut. In that fishery, 